Welcome back to Hidden Power. This is a Pokemon podcast. Today, we have got a very special guest. Dr. Lava has assisted in the discovery of brand new lost Pokemon. He currently has his own YouTube channel and is a writer at Did You Know Gaming. Dr. Lava joins us today for a deep dive and analysis on beta Pokemon. He even reveals and details the possibility of a brand new Generation 3 beta leak. This is a really juicy episode. Dr. Lava, thank you for joining us today. I uh, would love to hear a little bit about who you are and what your background is in the Pokemon context. Uh, for listeners, tell people who you are. Thanks for having me on, fellas. Thanks for being here. Dr. Lava is the name I use on the internet. My real name is Kyle, so call me either one you want. Well, originally, I had a YouTube channel, I guess it was about five years ago, where I just did kind of random Nintendo stuff, you know, as you do as a, as a white guy hitting 30 with no job and no formal <laughs> education. You're yeah, like, well, you know, what been, can I do? We've been there. Um, we, we are there. We are in it right now. <laughs> right. I took the, the path most traveled, I suppose. And then, um, you know, I did like uh, some Metroid and Mario and Zelda type stuff. And then it was like the eighth video or something I did was like a Pokemon video and it got 100,000 views. Whereas the previous one I'd, ones I had done got like 5,000. I was like, oh, cool. Well, I guess I'll do some more Pokemon videos. And then at some point it was like, well, I guess I can sort of only do Pokemon video. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I do enjoy other games as well. Um, Pokemon is really good to research, I would yeah. say, especially because, um, you know, it's like you couldn't, there's not like a thousand versions of Goombas in Mario, for example. And if there were, right. you know, even if you, there were like a thousand different Goombas in Mario or something, you know, if you like went way out of your way to find like an old Japanese magazine that described like their thought process on how they designed this one Goomba, no one would really give a crud. Right. Um, right. So <laughs> in that respect, you know, there's just a lot of history there. There's a lot that's untranslated and things like that. Um, not to mention like things like the beta, beta sprites where there's like yeah. early versions of all these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And again, like if you had like, oh, look at this early Goomba sprite. Yeah. Um, yeah. No one would really care. Yeah. Um, so Pokemon's good in that respect. You know, I was 10 years old when Pokemon fever swept the United States of America. And uh, so I was the right age at the right time. So, yeah. you know, I got mm -hmm. a blue version when I was, nice. you know, that summer, Pokemon fever summer. Four years almost, I've been writing for a YouTube channel called Did You Know Gaming. Yeah. Um, so I do most of the Pokemon videos, Zelda, uh, Metroid. I'd say Pokemon and anything out of Retro Studios has sort of been my main focus the last few years. Metal, Metal Gear Solid a bit. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of me in a nutshell as far as um, where I'm coming from. That last bit is super cool because you end up getting to do what you wanted to do which is cover more games than just pokemon yeah absolutely right. what i know you for right your main thing the reason why you why i think you are so impactful and, imp and important to the pokemon community is that you actually took the time and the resources to translate and and basically discover at least in the at least in the u.s and and you know outside of japan you discovered all of this uh, all of this beta information right all this information that had been lost in these japanese translations that were just kind of forgotten about with well he with, didn't hack it himself or <laughs> let's no, just he didn't put hack. that out there <laughs> he didn't hack but by translating old interviews by translating and, and kind of uh bringing to the west all of this like japanese information right you were able to kind of then piece together and present this information suggesting all of these like i think of the i think i i when it was happening, the Gen 5 information that you brought forth, right, that, again, I'm going to use the word discovered because from my perspective, living in the living on the East Coast of the United States, uh, that information was was not was not ever uh, available. Right. The fact that now we know about um, the, the beta tank version of Hydragon or there's a, uh, a fire version of Crustal. Right. Like these type of, or, or you know, there's a mid stage of the Lilligant family, right? These type of these types of things, I think, are are so cool, and no one else was doing this. The only other beta information we had was from actual illegal sources, right? Um, so I, I I don't know. So just for context for listeners, that is why I'm excited to have you on today. I would like to hear about kind of like why you stopped uploading so much to YouTube and why you were able to 
at why you instead pivoted to working with Did You Know Gaming? Well, my wife got pregnant. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a good reason. My personal <laughs> channel was making like 150 bucks a month in ad revenue. Okay. And so I was like, okay, even if I grow this channel 10 times bigger, I'll be like basically on track for minimum wage. And uh, mm. yeah, I got, a, you know, I got a wife and a kid now. And Love that. So I, I messaged Shane Gill, who's the founder of Did You Know Gaming. Did You Know Gaming is basically like three people. I think some people yeah. imagine it as like a corporation like watch mojo or something yeah yeah a friend of mine had just had been translating for him push dust in push dust in is his name mm -hmm. and uh uh so he'd been working for shane uh for a little while and so i saw that shane followed me on twitter and i said you need a writer and he said uh sure how much and i said a number which is probably lower than it should have been at the time <laughs> uh and he said okay yeah you you know start next month or something like that and awesome. so um i should say before we get any farther uh i get credited for things that um i probably shouldn't be that i definitely okay. shouldn't be um credit with more things than i've done um so for example the space world 97 uh beta sprites like that was all before, you know i was yeah. like on like a three-year vendor in in china when that happened and so i was in no way involved with that i didn't even know what was going on i was barely on the internet when that yeah. happened sometimes people think it was what uh, you were doing just it, i mean i think it 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 it, 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 it kind of corresponds with the same timeline like that space world demo came out and what was that 2018 maybe 2016 i don't exactly remember I think the it was date. 18. and then and and then your stuff started popping up in like 2019 um or at least your work so yeah I think, I, th I think that's good to clarify. Um, and even the the Gen Five, I I labeled it like Gen Five Historia because it didn't really have like a proper title. But there was yeah like four Japanese magazines, Nintendo Dream issues. They had been like bullet pointed on um, like PokaBeach.com or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so like uh, you had sort of credited me for the oh Hydragon family was a tank at one point. Like oh, that was okay. like a bullet. On some old website, I think it was Poker Beach, something okay. like that. And um, huh. so then I, I had like the magazines translated. So instead of like one page of bullet points, you've got like, you know, like 10 pages of, of the full translation. So right. again, I can't take full credit for okay. for a lot of stuff that I sometimes this, get credited for. What I this, think most people about think you. this. Yeah, I, I think that's a testament to, you know, how uh influential you've been in this field right True. is that when people see beta information they just assume that must have been dr lava yeah. you know like yeah because you're just synonymous you've with become it, you the know? face of it right i how, think sharing it is the best way to describe it like that you you brought it forth probably in the public arena more yeah. than more so than it would have been because of you're... because of the amount of I don't even know how you got <laughs> all the traction that you got, but it just ended up happening that way. That's I, that's how I saw it. Seen Please, it happen, yeah, but. I would love to learn more about this because, like, and tell us the the give us the information because, uh, I, I'm under the impression that you had paid a lot of money for translations and to actually get these physical copies to source the information, and then yeah, you also took the extra step by actually making a piece of consumable content that was easy for people to actually like understand and kind of connect with, right? Um, which I think I think that is a really important thing. Like you said, not anyone, but you know, it, you can just dump the information, but you were the one who shared it with the rest of. You're like Steve Jobs, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> like you made something. <laughs> you made I something was gonna. That we, can, we could actually enjoy, and it's. I don't mean to to screw up your show and be like no, well no, actually no. you got the wrong guy this is good information <laughs> no, not at all. Even no, not at all. <laughs> yeah i think a big part of it was i did have uh, you know got physical magazines and had them translated and put them right. on my website and i think really the main reason that you know there's people have been doing similar things for a long time um i think why i had some success was because i would take kind of bite-sized parts of it and um like put it on twitter with like some Oftentimes, I would like commission Racy Beep, uh, Rachel Briggs for art for you know a, a lost Pokemon, a better yeah. Pokemon, mm -hmm. and then so I'd like have sort of a flashy image and like a quote, um, you know, tweet yeah. size quote, mm -hmm. um, and then like that would link to like the full translation kind of thing. And so people, a lot of people would share, you know, retweet it and stuff, and then I'd get a lot of followers off that. Very few people actually click and read the full article. Very few. 
Um, so, but yeah, to answer the question, I think the reason I'm sort of, to some people, I'm synonymous with that kind of stuff is just because I, a lot of other people who do this kind of stuff, like there's a guy called Dogasu's Backpack who's been doing translations for like 20 years, okay. you know, much longer mm-hmm. than I've been doing but he doesn't quite have like the sort of the Twitter presence of having like a flashy image and like here's like a very grabbing quote to go along with it and here's the link. You know, he does the same kind of stuff, but I guess, you know, I mean no disrespect towards him whatsoever. I have a lot of respect for him, but he doesn't have quite the show me. He just doesn't have the flashy tweets to, to sort of like get people's attention. And so he get he just kind of doesn't get the, the street cred or the renown or whatever um yeah, which yeah. i've been lucky enough to sort of absorb i you know often i absorb more than like i said i i deserve um which i feel a little bit weird about um but anyway i'll no i appreciate you being transparent no, it's normal. I mean, it's this normal. is actually really yeah. great this is good information right because it's cha- it's actually changing the way you know i think about some of this stuff right um so that, that's really good i i mean yeah so i think i think what i'm most excited to hear is kind of just like so so here's the thing right if we had you on five years ago four years ago there would be breaking information that you're you know brand new content that you'd been put out that we'd want to hear more about but there has been kind of not that there's been a gap of information because you have been present on did you know gaming and those are always a blast to watch what is the frequency when it comes to like when you like like the information you put out on did you know gaming is that just like you're you're looking for stuff to then package into a new video or is that more of like you guys are actively making discoveries along the way a lot of it is um like a big part of what i do is just going through lots and lots and lots of old magazines um, thousands of old magazines and every interview that's in a magazine I'll take those pages I'll label them and I'll put them in a folder with you know a thousand other interviews and a lot of them are English some of them are Japanese or Spanish or whatever um, and then you know I'll, I'll sort of transcribe them and write down the highlights of each one and so that way I've got like after I've got you know say a dozen interviews for Pokemon Gold and Silver I'll be like okay well then I'll probably got enough you know some of this stuff doesn't look like it's on bulbapedia or wikipedia or i know yeah. they say it really anywhere online so uh, you know i'll pluck out those pieces i'll put them together and and, and do a video and be like you know I'll, you know flash it up a bit and be like wow we found these in all japanese magazines um and so that's a big part of what i do just kind of like go through magazines while listen to podcasts and you know countless hours doing that yeah. um and for other games, I can't really do it with Pokemon because those folks don't really talk to anyone um, for the most part. Nabogasawara, right. the localizer, happy to talk. But for other games, I'll, I'll contact the people who worked on the games and uh, interview them over Zoom and stuff. But for Pokemon, it's mostly all Japanese magazines. It's yeah. kind of the main way to get information that people haven't already heard in you know, 25 different YouTube videos that are random trivia that recycled again and again. Yeah, I was really curious, like... Has anyone from Game Freak ever reached out to you guys, or any from anyone, any official person from Game Freak, uh, Pokemon, Nintendo, anything like that? No, um, there recently there was a guy, um, Eddie Ruminski, who worked on the Pokemon 2000 Adventure game, which is um, did a video that included it. Um, it was like a, it was sort of like a Pokemon game that came out in 2000 that sort of ran something very similar to the Doom engine. Um, we love Doom. And had, had like a million players back. I love Doom. I was playing Doom right before we <laughs> got on this call. I'm sort of a Doomer. I, I play little other than Doom these days. God, Doom. But um, um, anyway, he worked on that Pokemon 2000 adventure, which had a million players and all stuff and all that, but it's been designated lost media for 15 years or something. Um, and he still had the files uh he offered them to me and some very smart folks um doom tay and i'm forgetting the other guy's name really sorry um for that guy but uh, two other folks much smarter than i am uh were able to um like so the game pointed because it was a an online game uh pointed to like servers and websites that no longer exist anymore so the game was sort of unplayable but they were able to fix that and um So the video showed like, oh, here's what the game is. Here's their interview with Eddie Ruminski. He gave us all the files and these guys made it playable again on the modern internet. Um, So no one from Game Freak has ever reached out to me. I've spoken to a few folks briefly, um, but Eddie Ruminski, he's not Game Freak, but he did 
work on a Pokemon game, an official Pokemon game. Um, uh, so that that was the only person who's or, for Pokemon who's ever come to me. Yeah, uh, another recent digital gaming video. I think it came out in the summertime. Um, recalled some of the. It, it was a kind of a recap of those old um, James Turner tweets where he de detailed all sorts of information. Um, and then one of the most striking things for me was kind of the inclusion or, or the omission that like typically with a new Pokemon generation, they typically have like up to, I, th I think it was like up to 300 possible designs that get scrapped, maybe just ideas. They might not be finalized designs, but that, that makes sense. I would imagine a lot of that, those designs, those creatures are kind of reiterative and get kind of cycled over into the next generation if they get scrapped. And we have seen that with a lot of beta Pokemon going back to Generation 1, that those en those show up in Gens 3, 4, or 5 later on down the line. Um, but I was wondering if you could tell us uh, a little bit about that, because uh, what James Turner is talking about in those tweets that you guys talk about um, is actually in Generation 8, right, which is really recent. Well, it was... Um, so he... Do you want to talk about the James Turner thing or the 300 Pokemon thing? Uh, are they not connected? Well, I'll just real quickly, I'll say, yeah. um, like for Gen 2, they made 300 Pokemon um, and, you know, he went with 100. I think in general, I think, the, and then they said the same for Gen 8. It seems like they always make around 300 or triple or so, yeah. approximately what they ended up using. And based on, you know, there's interview here and they're, they're worded differently, but it seems like generally there was at least like sketches and, you know, maybe uh, what do they call it? The design sheet or whatever. Um, it's the wrong like terminology. Concept art. Concept art. It's like a concept yeah. art kind of a thing uh, for you know, let's say three hundred of them, and then they ended up going with, uh, you know, like one hundred or so, uh, depending on, you know, oh, well, we don't really need two rabbits. Okay, well, like we need to fill this sort of beach area, and so we need sort of like beach relevant Pokemon and mm -hmm. and things like that. Oh, you know, we have enough three stage families, yeah, really so cool. we're not going to use this breaks. one. So. In my heart shatters into it's, millions of pieces. It stinks <laughs> that they scrap stuff all. for that, but it is kind of interesting mm -hmm. that like literally any sort of design could pop up depending on what the game, what the world and the environment would actually need. A lot of people, what I see them do is like, like people will make fake mon regions and they're like, okay, if it's based on Australia, it's going to have all only in all of the Australian creatures, right? And then just turn them into Pokemon, right? Pokemon. Yeah, but honestly, if we get if we ever get an Australia region, it's gonna be like we're gonna have a giraffe starter and like a I don't know, like a it literally be well, they, it'll just be whatever. In fairness, they have been doing I think a better job at connecting the starter to a re the region at least a little more loosely. Okay, uh, like in recent gens, but uh, I, that is like that's some of my favorite kind of I guess beta or creation stories is the ones where like. This game needed this, so we made it. Like, I remember, and, I, you know, I don't know if this was your discovery or, or what, but I learned about this from your posts. The thing with Basilin, how they were like, we need more water types, and they made a Basilin. And yeah. then they were like, uh, make two forms so it looks like we have more water types. And then the funny thing about that is now, genuinely, one of my favorite Pokemon designs ever is Basilegion from Legends Arceus. So to think that that may not you know, that probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for someone going, uh, we need more water types, just make a random fish and split into two forms, you know? That's I love that. Yeah. I think they yeah, that, was, that was in those those Gen 5 uh, Nintendo Dream magazines. They were still mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, we need some water. Let's just do like a standard fish and let's make two yeah. of them because we're short on water types. Yeah, right. and, uh, and yeah, Basculin was a pretty forgivable Pokemon, I guess, until, yeah, you're right, until Legends Arceus and got uh, Bascule Legion. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we can move on to the James Turner stuff, but yeah, so I, I think they, you know, like the, the the most fun thing, you know, the best thing that can happen, whether it's from like a leak, a hack, uh, sometimes like someone like Sunikazu Ishihara will reveal him himself, is like when those sprites or those concept art or whatever of those like rejected Pokemon somehow one way or another make their way onto the internet and you're like oh there could have been a you know yeah. kangaroo ghost or whatever yeah um, <laughs> that's sick you know and they, especially when there's like you know 30 or 40 of them or whatever um, it's, and it's literally it's shadow boxing <laughs> nice the, 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 the ghost kangaroo 
right the coast, cool. right. But uh, as far as James Turner, um, yeah, so it wasn't. It was like Gen six and seven, really, more than it was eight. Um, I just kind of I threw it into that Sword and Shield video because I needed Sword and Shield stuff, so I kind of lumped it all in there. But um, so yeah, he, you know, uh, for anyone unfamiliar, James Turner was art director on Sword and Shield, but he, um, you know, worked. He started working on the mainline Pokemon games in Gen five. Prior to that, he worked on um, the Genius Sonority games, um, Gale Pokemon of XD, like Gale of Darkness, and I think Coliseum as well. Although mm-hmm. I could be wrong about that. I know he worked on no, XD, like right. Gale of Darkness, the sequel. Um, and you know, I think also some it was Pokemon Trozai, Trozai, something like that. Sure, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Some of the spinoffs. And uh, according to him, he's the only person who's worked both on those spinoffs and on the mainline games. Oh, hmm. um, so, yeah, he kind of worked his way up from the spinoffs to a Pokemon designer to art director in, for Sword and Shield. Now he's left to, to do the Plucky Squire. But mm-hmm. um, so anyway, yeah, he made his Twitter account in, I forget, something like 2015, 16, something like that. Um, and, you know, for a long time, he only had like, you know, a hundred followers or whatever. And so he was saying stuff out into the ether that was getting like two likes, three likes. Um, and I guess eventually, so yeah, at one point, I think in 2019, I went through every tweet he'd ever made and just kind of like copy pasted the interesting stuff. Like he'd said like, oh, uh, I'm going to pronounce all the Pokemon names wrong. The Gant, Naganadel, uh, Close uh, was based <laughs> basically said he was based on the xenomorph from um, mm-hmm. the alien movies mm-hmm. um, and that uh, who's that big fat guzzlord uh, was <laughs> um, partly inspired by uh, Agrajag from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and that uh, a snow cone Pokemon from Gen 5 who he made uh, were inspired by the um, uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from from uh, Ghostbusters, as well as by Weezing. Um, oh. So it was sort of was like uh, because the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man Ghostbusters takes place in New York, yeah, and uh, and uh, you know, but, you know, it's based on New York. So stuff like that, and also stuff about sort of had some behind the scenes, like someone was like, "Oh, do you name your Pokemon?" He's like, "Oh no, there's like a name, there's like an official name raider here who names all really? the Pokemon and." Mm. Oh, there's someone else who comes up with the lore. Like we suggest names and lore, but there's like an expert for that. And so just kind of stuff about like how the office works and like where he got Pokemon ideas from and and like how they pick the shiny colors and stuff like that. So I copy pasted that and like I started quoting them. Um, I wasn't just like quote retweeting. I'd like take the interesting bits of what he said. And, you know, like like mm-hmm. I do. I say with the, the way I do Twitter, it's like I'll have like a cool image with the quote. And then, like, his picture of the, the the person being quoted in the corner. And after I did, like, one or two of those, um, within, like, 24 hours, he'd gone through and deleted, like, 96 tweets from his Twitter history. Oh, man. Um, including all the ones I'd copy-pasted, and plus, I think, some more, which I had, had not bothered to take down because I didn't think they were interesting. But, um, so... Do you- I took from that that someone around the office was like, dude, what... You're not supposed to be saying this shit. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We had to delete it. Um, unfortunately, I had it all copy pasted at that point. Um, um, but yeah, there's some interesting, you know, like I said, the State Park, basically where he got the ideas for a lot of his Pokemon and um, other things just sort of around the office. And, and you know, I'd asked if I could interview him. He said he would like to. This was years ago. He said he would like to, but um, that any interview has to be approved by corporate, basically. Mm-hmm. And I've spoken to other people as well who said, like, you know, Pokemon head office has to approve any interview or I, I can't talk to you. I could lose my job. And so mm-hmm. um, they're locked down super tight. That, you know, like I've, Retro Studios is also owned by Nintendo, 100%. And, like, you know, I've gotten design documents i've gotten footage out of those guys lots of interviews and stuff um uh for zelda games and metroid games and other stuff but like the pokemon people they put the yeah. fear into god fear of god into their folks because that like i have asked hundreds of, of people who've worked on pokemon games and like only a few of them even responded and they the ones who did were just 
said what I just said to you, which is like, you can get approved by head office. And let me tell you right now, that is not going to happen unless you're IGN or Game Informer. I was like, mm, oh, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. How would that work with like, like, for example, James Turner has now left the Pokemon company. Would that still like, you know, because I imagine he yeah, still has probably him, NDAs and stuff. Would that prevent him from like sharing more information like that in the future? I contractually, I don't know. I've been thinking about asking him. I was going to, I didn't want to do it like as soon as he like, Yeah, make your return to YouTube that. with that. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. I do know there are people who've left Nintendo um, I don't want to use this guy's name, but there was a guy who worked for Nintendo for a long time. Um, for well, starting in the '90s, and he left a long time ago too. Uh, but he was pretty high up, um, and he—I was in a conversation with him. Um, he, um, well, basically, he had shared—I'll just say—an image soon before we spoke, and I was later told that. Uh, someone from Nintendo called and threatened the lives of his family. Something to oh do with uh, threatening to drown in a in a swimming pool. What? Um, and did not ever do that again. Don't ever sh- like share an image from the '90s that was basically cut content. Yeah. Um, Wait, so he shared it with. Like you. Said, what I'm was... hearing is the Nintendo ninjas are real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, that's um, what you're I hearing. Think, I don't think that was a lawyer. I think that was uh, that was like some sort of executive of some yeah. sort but i mean basically that even if people who've already left um there's 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 one there's a fear of getting sued which is a, a something i hear a lot and there have been issues of people who i have interviewed for digino gaming who have been who've gotten into legal trouble for talking to me which yeah, sure. um hmm. which uh, that's a whole another thing we don't need to get into right now but um, for talking with you yeah Oh, wow. Like someone talked to me and I quoted them in a video and then they got in the legal trial. You know, they had to end up yeah. getting lawyers and, 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 uh, after they were got in trouble with Nintendo's lawyers, basically they had to yeah. get their own lawyer and the whole thing. It's happened more than once. Yeah. I feel bad about it, but yeah. we don't need to get into all that. I um, believe it though. So there's a fear of getting sued. There's also the fear of getting blackballed, which is someone who's still in the industry, even if they're not working for Nintendo. Um, I have been told from other people like, well, he, my fear is that uh, my company at some point will want to work some in some capacity with Nintendo, and they'll say, well, we're not going to work with you while you've got that guy under your employee. Um, mm-hmm. That's so now awesome. they're concerned for people who won't want to talk, and then there's also just the matter of um, a lot of them just want to keep that option open. They don't want to, you know, maybe someday I want to go back to Nintendo back to Nintendo or yeah. something like that. And if I, if I do an interview that they wouldn't like, then that door yeah. shut and yeah, it's not worth, I can talk to some YouTube channel and therefore like limit my career. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Possibilities. That's so that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder about the ethics of all of this now, because you know, a lot of our show circulates confirmed leaks by Ram, yeah, we dabble in this as well. Like we, <laughs> we cover like Riddler case, yeah. 2 and stuff if you're familiar with him. But I feel like it's a different type of leak. I feel like it is because it is. It, it's more of like it's like what's to come kind of information versus like confirmed what could have been. Yeah, what could have been. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, if like you're not directly involved with something, I don't think you even really need to be concerned about ethics. You know, like there was. Uh, you know, like the space world thing. Like, yeah. should I feel bad for talking about the space world uh, Gen Two beta sprites because um, they, they were ill begotten? Like, someone actually intended. You know, I don't think you need to worry about that at yeah. all. I feel a bit weird, and it's an issue. Like I said, some like I interview someone and then I quote them, and then they get in legal sure. trouble for yeah. it. I'm sort of, sort of, still uh, coming to grips with what I should do about that yeah. because um, anyway. We don't have to get into all that. No, I guess. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot. I um, I do. I do want to take you know this conversation and, and move it. So talking about the leaks, like you know there there are beta Pokemon that have leaked that we you know know about. Like I I'm horrible with names, but uh, the first one I always think of is the little electric tiger line. That correct me if I'm wrong was in the Gym One beta and then again in the Gen Two beta. Um, yeah, Kotora. Right. That's right, and Raitora. Well. I wonder, like, now that this is, you know, even if it's not by 
official reveals. This is now public information. Like, we're looking at it right now. Would that... Do you think that would impact the chances of Pokemon recreating? Because we've seen them kind of bring back beta designs and reuse them. Like, for example, like, the Farfetch'd Evolution does have a lot of similarities to Surfetch'd. But do you think, like, now that this stuff is officially revealed, it, or not officially revealed, but, you know, public yeah. knowledge. It's, it's, like, confirmed to be real. Actually, is right. it confirmed to be real? Because I feel like when the... I feel like there is still a little bit of discourse around the Space World demo of whether or not it's, like, actually real or not. At least that was the conversation when it first came out. But, sorry, I didn't it's, mean to derail uh, it. I'm just... Yeah. Sorry, were you, were you, were you not... Uh talking there Leos. oh yeah that i guess that's my question but to wrap it up in a bow and put it simpler do you think that when these betamons get leaked or like this and become public knowledge it impacts the chances of them being used or reworked for a design later like the far-fetched evolution was with surfetched well um sort of i guess sort of two answers i might say first of all they've never done it they've never done the direct um, right, you know, first right. Of all, so like, right. like you mentioned, like there was Madamu, the um, sort of like goose looking evolution of uh, far fetched mm -hmm. from Gen 2, and then in you know, Gen 8, they brought Surfetch, so it's certainly not the same Pokemon, right? Um, and also, there was like a grass, you know, a, more, a more direct example, there was like, a grass evolution of Eevee from yeah. Gen 2 and like Leafeon, um, but again, it wasn't like the exact same Pokemon, um. So, Masuda has said that they've never, um, I think, I forget what year he said this, it was in the last decade, and this was not like yeah. Gen 2. He said that, like, they've never cut a Pokemon and then ended up using it, um, but the, um, uh, the, the leaks basically have showed that there were some Pokemon, at least from Gen 1, who were cut that were later used in Gen 2, like, as is. And I believe mm -hmm. it was a Suki Mori quote. I remember contradicting that, him saying, like, yeah, we did. Um, uh, some, some, like, there was, like, a Japanese magazine that I had translated where the person was like, how did you come up with 100 new Pokemon? He was like, well, some of these were just ones that we didn't use from Gen 1. We just just used them right here, Gen yeah. 2. Fill out the roster. Um, so, but other than Gen 1 to Gen 2, I'm not aware of any sort of, like, one-to-one -one, uh, yeah, cycling. Yeah, absolutely. Of cut Pokemon, and I, it seems like I, once they, yeah, yeah, not, you know, I guess you could to be charitable. I think Masuda. There's a lot of times I've noticed he seems to misremember things. Um, <laughs> I think even if he was technically wrong, I think he's sort of generally right in that they don't, except for Gen One to Gen Two, they don't ever seem to bring something back uh, as it was. Um, I think designs so, get cut because they're not fully fleshed out for the most part, right? And then usually when they re when they when they actually debut, it's a completely reiterated design. It's it usually fits. It just feels the most pokemon it could, right? It's got all those extra additions that make it unique. Honestly, Sunfloor should have been a cut con should have should, should have been a beta Pokemon. Should have been cut. They, I mean, they what, it was changed. Pearl enthusiast is gonna be yeah. so upset hearing that. It was and, changed. And, it was changed. Yeah. I, I, I would I, say yeah, go. I was gonna say this before when we were talking about the, the three hundred that they make or you know, like supposedly make um every generation. Like I do think that those go on to become Pokemon in future gens. Like that's just how it is, but probably like this is just speculation, obviously. But you know, I think that they just rework them. They yeah. rework them. In Gen 9, there was a ton of them that you can see that were like, this was a concept of those ones right. that were recently discovered. Like, Belly Bolt is is that Politoed yeah, to absolutely. me. Like, See, but how much of that is coincidence, I wonder? You I know? don't... I really don't think it is. I Clogsire don't, but... was kind of similar to the Beta Whooper too, wasn't it? I feel yeah. like I remember people saying that, but I don't know if it's true. I, For me, like, clearly this is speculation, but it's just when you look at they probably saw how many people loved the beta whooper you know people were like going nuts about it i mean people still love that thing and they probably were like let's make a pokemon that like gets this same vibe you know what i mean i don't think they directly mm -hmm. used it but that's it, just my yeah, there are idea. a lot of interesting examples like i can i mean and i again i wonder how many are like actual concrete examples where pokemon 
did take inspiration from an old beta design and how many are just coincidental. Like I think about the beta Suicune, people have drawn comparison of that to Spectrier. There's um yeah, that, the bit, Ditto bit Evolution <laughs> beta to Meltan. There's a lot of people that have kind of connected those two, especially yeah, yeah. because they tied Meltan's lore so heavily with Ditto by like making that like a thing in Pokemon Go. Um but you know, I I'd be curious to know like how many of those examples are coincidence and how many are planned we're taking this design reworking it or we're inspired by this design i just want turban i would just want that in the game that like that needs to that be would a, be cool that needs to be a true <laughs> shelter evolution yeah a, i, I would mean, say yeah. like these pokemon are like never gonna come back i mean you might get something you know like you said uh the ditto evolution in a way sort of maybe uh turning into um i forgot his name meltan uh, meltan um uh so you know something like that certainly and it, you know it is hard to tell like is this a coincidence or something else That's james right. Turner said where it's like oh it's hard it's really hard making pokemon these days because it's like there's so many things already have already been done yeah it's mm -hmm. like trying to park in a parking lot uh that's already full and there's other cars circling the lot and all that and it's like this color scheme has already been done this animal has already been done this you know motif or whatever has already been done and so it's like um you know even like some pokemon that come out now it's like they kind of look like pokemon that have already been done not just cut pokemon but yeah fully released pokemon so well I um yeah i don't think we'll ever see those pokemon as is and um and the ones that look similar, it's hard to even know, like, is this thing based on that old thing? Or is it just mm. like, oh, well, we haven't made a koala yet, so yeah. let's just make a koala. I right. think they didn't. Mm -hmm. They've had a koala that we scrapped, like, 15 years ago. Mm. Yeah, I think yep. Pokemon has given themselves a lot of space. Uh, with Pokemon, with all these different iterations of Pokemon forms, right? We have just tri we have regional forms. We have just evolutions, right? Cross gen evolutions, uh, and the most glaring one to me now, the most exciting, I think, and you know, it's up for debate if it will actually return. Is Paradox Pokemon? I think by the very definition of a Paradox Pokemon, it's a Pokemon it reinterpreted in another dimension, right, or whatever, a different timeline. Uh, I think Beta Pokemon. It, like, if they're ever going to be reworked or brought back, like, it would be some sort of mechanic like that, where they, like, intro like let's say we get a, I don't know, Gen 1 remake, and they introduce these new forms of, of Pokemon, right? Okay, I, maybe I'm going too far with that. I don't think they would actually, like, ca ca uh, canonize beta Pokemon, but I think Pokemon has given themselves a lot of space to take these designs, rework them, and then reintroduce them in, in different ways, 100%. Which, which is the exciting thing. I think earlier you said, like, why do people not care about, like, a different form of a Goomba? It's because it's because all the same characters appear in every single Mario game. But with Pokemon, every new generation brings in new possibilities, right? Pokemon change, they adapt. There's so many of them. Pokemon are the focal point of the Pokemon games, right? It's not, you know, Mario doesn't change at all. Link doesn't change, right? He gets a new well, set of changes. clothing. <laughs> yeah, but hardly, right? But with Pokemon, yeah. every every one of these beta Pokemon, every one of these possibilities, right? Like the tank, uh, you know, Hydreigon or, you know, whatever, right? It, it There's always the possibility that they could get reintroduced into the series, which is really cool, I think. Mm -hmm. It would be fun if Pokemon was a bit more like, I don't know if this is the right word for it, like sort of meta about this sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. So, to yeah. my knowledge, and I think I would have noticed if they had, uh, to my knowledge, they never even acknowledged the uh, nope. like the beta, like the Space World leak or any of that, the you know, subsequent leaks. Um, you know, they want to pretend like it never even happened. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. like, if they would just do something like, uh, you know, they do these sort of weird Pokemon reveals sometimes. Like, the one that comes to mind was that one was like, you got to watch a 24 hour oh, live stream. The Galarian Glimwood Pony single to... one. Yeah. Galarian Tony to run yeah. past. Which isn't even like good. Second, like, do something, I don't know, like some kind of I fun know. reveal, and it's like, boom, it's Katora, the like electric tag or whatever. And it's mm -hmm. just like, we yeah. know, you yeah. know, it was everyone's favorite. Cut Pokemon. I feel like so, they maybe you know, do some of that though. You know. Maybe. What's your favorite cut Pokemon? Yeah, I like the tur no, the the turkey Pokemon from Gen Four. I think. Wait, what? Turkey? There's a turkey. 
No, I'm just kidding. There's, there's, there's I was about to say, you were like, <laughs> you were melting my brain right now. I, I was know. like, mm, I, I was don't like, think so. Dude, I've never the heard turkey of is one of my favorite animals, so I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's a normal type ho oh, oh. It's a good one. Good joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was he was a Thanksgiving themed turkey. <laughs> yeah. um, it's the counterpart yeah, guess, to Deli Bird. Right. I wouldn't even um, put it I think that. I like probably like that. Was it Nora Wara and um, John Pan? It's like uh, sort of something sort of like a straw voodoo doll and yes, like uh, John, like a Chinese zombie kind of thing from Gen Two. Just because it was weird mm-hmm. and um, kind of yeah, creepy. Because like the they're weird, it seems like the kind of thing that I would say they wouldn't do. But there was also that like Gimp Pokemon whose name is uh, B- Bonetta. Is that what it? Bonetta. Oh yeah. yeah. The the yeah. two souls. Is that the one? No, Bayonet. That's another one. Oh, Bayonet. Um, yeah, I think it's similar to that. Mm-hmm. What's the Gimp Pokemon? I, I, that's one I like. I never ever use. I never even think about. I forget its name because it, it kind of grosses me out. What What's is it? That's like a Gimp. Bayonet. Shup it in Gen Three. I think it is Duskull. What are we thinking of? I don't know what it is. Oh, just, <laughs> just type in Gimp Pokemon. Hold on. <laughs> Well, while you do that, my favorite is I'm I again I don't know the names uh, as well as um Soul especially, and I'm sure you, Doctor Lava, but uh my favorite is the the boat the like you know gondola or boat Viking boat you know what I'm talking about yeah, from Gen that 2. one's really cool I love that one yeah that's a good one yeah which that one. was supposed to be the, the the legendary right so that kind of that was probably supposed to be. The opposite. It's not to confirmed Ho-Oh. in any way. That's sure, yeah, I'm, spe- I'm speculating. I'm speculating. <laughs> but then, but then, yeah. uh, once Lugia was created for the movie, I think the story goes that Lugia then was brought into the main series games as the box legendary, which would then replace the uh, the the ore the the boat Pokemon. That would have been weird to have a boat Pokemon. To me, that's just like Lapras. Like Lapras is the boat Pokemon. See, they they that executed it perfectly. I agree. Say it again. Definitely. I was saying, I think they just executed it perfectly. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. some Pokemon where it's like, like I love Flamingo and Toucanon, but they are pretty much just a Flamingo and just a Toucan. Yeah. But, like, that boat Pokemon wasn't just a boat. You could see the monster. It was yeah. It was a, I don't know how someone looked at that design and went, no, it's not good enough and scrapped it. I have no idea how someone did that. Yeah. What about you, Soul? What's your favorite, Soul? Uh, my favorite is all of them, but <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like the Beta King drill a lot. Yeah, the Beta King drill is cool. great. Yeah, that's the that's the one that I wish was there the most. But I also love that biking boat one a whole lot too. I think I like the scrapped water starter. I think the first stage starter is kind of boring, but as yeah, it evolves into oh, the plesiosaur. Yeah, what is mm-hmm. it? Ak- Akaria. Um, is pretty fierce. That's like the, the fear. I do really like and that I think one. what we ended up with was like pre Marina, uh, or maybe I don't see how people ever connect those. But I don't sure. get that well, either. It, the early I would say if like anything that seals. was more so taken from the fire seal, if anything. But sure. I don't think it was. I it's think it was just bit. a seal. I think that's one of those examples of like it was yeah. just a coincidence. Something mm-hmm. that yeah yeah something that I never I wanted... understood was uh, the original Chikorita evolving into original the beta whatever replaced mega um bay leaf it like it goes from a, a dinosaur flower. to a flower mm-hmm. into back to a, a dinosaur guy. back to a dinosaur yeah, that yeah. was a weirder line it's, sorry uh, my vpn is different I'm, I'm back i don't know if you've noticed i would have gone for a few seconds but, oh okay <laughs> oh god it's all good we were just you know talking about our favorites ignored anyway. a remark or something uh, it was good. It's all good. Yeah. Um. So, let's see. Like, um. I have so many questions here. Well, I wanted to know, Doctor Lava, about the the bayonet, or was it bayonet that you looked up? Yeah. But again, I, I can't pronounce these things right. Bayonet number three fifty four. I think it was. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I it's was like curious. It's like yeah. Kind of yeah. Like, or whatever. I really think I've, that they were connected because they're both doll, like ghost dolls, kind of thing. Oh, I think a very clear example right here. 
of like po- uh, of beta Pokemon being int- reintroduced into actual forms is the I would say the beta form of or I guess yeah the the original pre evolution for Girafferig. Obviously, we didn't get that Pokemon those the twin spirits, um, but. I do think the presence of Girafferig being part of a of an evolutionary branch now now seeing that Girafferig evolves into Ferrigarath, um, it to me I don't know it feels like a direct it's like a it's like it's like the original intention that was that it was always supposed to have some sort of evolution and they've fulfilled that uh, in that in that new evolution I think also if you're enjoying this episode please consider supporting Hidden Power on Patreon or YouTube channel members right now we have four tiers and the lowest membership starts at just five dollars a month supporters get access to our secret discord server and help control the direction of the podcast supporters also get access to our archive of bonus episodes okay so our discord on Honestly, is popping. We have other creators in there too, which is yeah. kind of fun. It ain't just the three of us. We're discussing leaks when they drop. We talk about news. We'll be talking about how Soul Silver Art has, you know, just garbage takes. It's so it's much a fun. Place for us to connect. I'm in there every day. Also, we have revamped our merch store. So proud of every product that is in this store now. We have stickers, T-shirts, mugs ball caps right the dad caps these ball caps are embroidered look at this it's literally an embroidered so clean you cannot get anything more high quality than that i just got news do y'all hear that solbasaur says that he even <laughs> has his own merch i'll talk for him it's beautiful very cool designs you guys should very check it out. japanese style e- even the front of the shirt has a unique logo i'm getting one for sure if you're invested in this show invest in the show thank you so much for watching and now back to the video uh the clearest example for me even though this is just speculation i think it makes a lot of sense that if if generation 8 had a ton of uh beta designs right or or scrapped lost designs um i think if we look at applin and duraludon getting direct evolutions in in generation 9 that's a really clear example but applin especially um, I imagine, so yeah, Applin getting a base form, getting two cross-gen evolutions, not cross-gen, but uh, split evolutions, and then having Applin also getting a, a Gigantamax form, and then also Applin getting uh, two new evolutions in in uh, in Scarlet and Violet. What is that, like six designs, right? All throughout all these different games, all these different iterations. Um, I think the Five. way... Yeah, I think... I think the way... Oh, with the G-Max, that is six. Wow. Yeah. I think the way... They really love apples. Yeah, they really do like apples. The way I imagine Game Freak designed something is, okay, let's make an apple Pokemon, right? And then they conceptualize 10 different ways an apple Pokemon could exist, right? And they take up all these different forms and ideas, and usually they all get scrapped except for one, or maybe they get pushed, you know, it's kind of squished together into a single concept. Um, but I... And then, here we go. Then we also have... I wasn't even going to think of this, but Pomo to Pama to Pomot, like, to why Pama. do those What's all Pama? exist? They're all different <laughs> versions of the same Pokemon. That's kind of how I think about it. Generation 9 actually saw a lot of those Pokemon that seem like they barely change as they evolve. Um, so, I don't know. I, I just feel like... I feel like I've never been more excited about, like, seeing these cross-gen evolutions, these beta Pokemon may be re-emerging into future generations. That's kind of just what I've been thinking about a lot recently. Um, but, some so, prof- Doctor, while, while we got you here, <laughs> Doctor, um, I, I would like to know a little bit about, you know, you, you, you don't just talk about beta Pokemon and lost Pokemon, but you also talk about um, scrapped events. You talk about... Um, you, you you also talk about or you yeah I don't know if you've revealed it or discovered these things but you've also talked a lot about um, kind of like gameplay elements and considerations by the team of how they might change how Pokemon games uh, kind of work going forward and we've seen in Generation Eight and Generation Nine there's been a lot of really cool new additions to um, you know the library of Pokemon games and then also what kind of constitutes as a Pokemon game with Legends Arceus, um, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Those are really interesting things. In one of your videos, you talked about how Masuda and the team kind of re-examined the original, like, the rules of a Pokemon game and how they were established based on the original limitations 
of the older Pokemon games is, you know, I think some of the examples you talked about were like the number of Pokemon within your party, right? Maybe changing that from six to something else, uh, as well as the fact that Pokemon only knew four moves. I think a lot of what we know from these Pokemon games, like what we know as Pokemon, were really just built off of limitations. And I'm curious if there's if if you've seen anything that might suggest. Um, or anything that was scrapped, maybe again with the idea of like, could this be introduced in a future game? Um, yeah, can you speak on anything? Um, you know, it doesn't quite answer your question, but there was a, a, a translation I was reading recently that there was like one line that stuck out to me, as sort of maybe indicative of the future of the series. Mm. Um, which is sort of to to your point. Um, so it was um, it's like a let's see what year was it? I like how you want to properly s- source things. Right, it was it, it was uh, I, I I think it was like 2019, but they were talking about 2015. Okay. Um, so you know, uh, Satoshi Tajiri was like or, or the founder of Game. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's 2015 is around like X and Y. In uh, the Gen 3 Oris remakes. came out in 2014, so it was that gap year between oh, Oris and okay. Sun and Moon. Correct. But yeah, so they were, I think it was a few years later, but they were talking about 2015. And so Satoshi Tajiri, you know, is like the, um, you know, the founder of Game Freak and all that, um, who like just kind of stopped making public appearances around 2000. Um, but in this interview, um, they were talking about how he still was around the office at least uh, they didn't say how often or uh, how active he is um, but they were saying that he is you know they were saying oh he was at the office he said this he was at the office he was playing donkey kong in arcade he was talking about he wanted to make sure that the late great jumpy yokoi did a good uh console port and all this stuff um but something um uh, go itchy no i hope i'm pronouncing that right the 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 sound guy from mm-hmm. the uh, quite a few generations now but he was saying oh you know what uh yeah it was around um yeah gen six or so was go itchy no say and some other folks were like let's he was a bit vague but he said like go itchy no say was like let's do the games we've already been doing but let's make them like way better um That's so subjective like, which sounded to me like he wanted to like sort you know make the graphics or whatever more impressive and satoshi tajiri was like that is not the game freak way the game freak way is to um is to make things that are cheap but fun and so what they ended up doing instead of as he put it because he was vague i mean it sounded to me like he was saying make a bigger better pokemon game he said instead of doing what we're already doing but better let's make something cheap and fun. And then they made a uh, pocket card jockey instead of, you know, a better version of what they were already doing, which I took to mean Pokemon. Um, so from that, I gathered that, and they call it a game freak isms. And so they were talking yeah. about like Satoshi Tajiri and Tensugi Mori are still around the office, passing on the game freak isms to the younger staff uh, and as of 2015, um, when this interview was, was referring to. Um, so I took that to mean that, like, you know, there's been some controversy in recent years about, like, mm-hmm. well, Pokemon's, like, lagging behind as far as graphics and other things. Um, and I think that's kind of here to stay. Um, I mean, I don't know about the frame rate and stuff like that, but, like, you're never... I don't think any time in the near future, in the next few generations or maybe ever, there's going to be, like, whoa, this Pokemon game looks like you know, yeah. Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah. Um, I think the, you know, they're really talking about how it's like a game freakism going all the way back to the very early days when they were making a Game Boy game in the 3D era. Th- that um, has some sort of name. I've heard that, th- like, to me, that lines up with what I've heard about Nintendo in general. Nintendo typically likes to, <laughs> right, they like to, I don't, I don't recall what it's called, but you basically, to make something that would last the test of time, you want to, like, use cheap affordable technology um but if you can innovate on it to make it fun which is what you're saying um then it just i think it it maybe is a more reliable product 
I think is maybe the advantage there. It's also cheaper. You can make, I think it, what it does is it kind of puts the focus on the gameplay and the fun of it, right? It's like the core of like why you're doing something. It's not a flashy coat of paint, essentially. So, I, I mean, everything you're saying lines up with what a lot of the complaints, but also what we've seen from Pokemon for a long time now. It so adds up, though. I mean, I've, I think I've said it on this podcast, but that's what Game Freak has always done. It's never been different. Like, this is a continual thing in every generation or game. It's it's always felt like this, like that they've been, let's say, behind. But that's what that's what they do. That's how they do it. And that just, it adds up. Yeah. For sure. It might work worked out well for them, you know. I don't know what yeah, the budget is. I would say. Game, it's almost, <laughs> been, almost more than ever, except for Gen 1, I think, still has the record. But yeah. Yeah, Gen 9 sold, what, 20 plus million? I think Sword and Shield sold 20 plus million. It did, yeah. um, it's not past Sword and Shield yet, but they, they've they been saying that it's projected to pass Sword and Shield, which is both of them past um, Gen 2's games. But Gen 1's still on the top. Crazy. I was so disappointed that Legends Arceus... Got, yeah, I think it got the sales by really diamond and shining pearl. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a lot like of factors. A, a big there. part of that, I mean, for one, it's one version, not the two versions, right? And then I think the biggest thing was that it was a January release versus Damn. that November holiday release. And then less than a month, like one day less exactly, than a month after Legends Arceus came out. They reveal Scarlet and Violet. So, yeah. like, they kind of... I think they did Legends Arceus dirty, to be honest. Yeah, if Legends Arceus was like... Like, they were the unsure of what right they would my do well. I need that copia. I need to give me more of it. Yeah. I need it. <laughs> so you liked Legends. I loved Legends Arceus. I thought they, they were, it was fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. So to see that it was like... seemed like, you know, they put in a lot more effort on that one. It was like, it really mixed things up. I had more fun with that than... You know, any Pokemon game in a long time, and then it was just like a brilliant diamond, shining pearl sold better, and yeah. I'm sure it was a lot easier to make. They didn't even make yeah. it themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like yeah. Something I'm thinking about is like you know, you 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 spend a lot of time. I'm I'm presuming, um, you know, translating older interviews. But um, how many like are there a lot of interviews that come out now from Game Freak? Um, or about Pokemon that aren't covered by other people that might just be out there that that are only in Japanese or are those because I, I know interviews do come out like comments from Masuda etc do come out and people you know IGN will cover that stuff um, but I'm wondering do you think there's like a lot of more modern uh, resources interviews publications that need to be transcribed I don't think there's much. I think the closer you get to present day, the more likely something is to have already been translated because yeah. there's always going to be, you know, there's so much stuff, like hundreds, you know, b- many books that are many hundreds of pages from like uh, the first two gens, especially, and, and continuing on. Even in Gen 5, I can think of, I've got a couple of books on my computer that are, well, not full book, um, you know, dozens of pages uh, from books, even in Gen 5 that come to mind. Um, I know there's some stuff in Gen 6 as well. I was just looking at some stuff today, yeah. uh, magazines and stuff. I think the closer, you know, it's like now there's always going to be someone who at least as it like uh, translates the highlight, at least summarizes the highlights in a, in, a, in a translation summary. And then those websites like IGN and, and Nintendo Life and all that, um, you know, those guys need to write like 10 articles a day in order to make a living. And so a lot of what they do is just kind of like, find tweets that they can turn into articles that someone else has done something like a translation. Oh, Pokemon, you know, Pokemon's always a winner. So, you know, there's always going to be a fan and behind that fan who's translated, there's always going to be someone who needs to fill their quota of Nintendo life articles for the day. And I'm not, I'm not bagging on Nintendo life, just the way Mm -hmm. things are structured. Yeah. Um, So I don't think there's much of consequence or at least there's exponentially less now than there is uh, from 10 and especially 20 years ago. Yeah. So you have like, it sounds like you have like a, an archive of kind of like a, like a, like a backlog of articles just prepared to be translated whenever you get around to it. Yeah. Um, you know, cause like I said, a lot of what I do is get through magazines. So I'm still finding new stuff, but I do have 
yeah, you know, like a backlog basically of um, a lot of it. I, I, I know. Uh, yeah, he was on your show, uh, High Res Pokemon. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's awesome. You know, a lot of the stuff. Uh, you know, a lot. I, I need to give credit to a lot of folks, but I, probably him more than anyone helps me out a lot because a lot of the time he'll be like, "Oh yeah, I've got this book and that book." I'm like, well, "I didn't even know those books existed." And he'd be like, "Oh, this book is 600 pages." I'm like, "Well, can you?" Scan. <laughs> yeah. You scan me the first. Yeah. You do some free work for me, buddy. Get translated. Pal. So, and I should also mention, I, I can't, I can't speak no languages. Um, you know, I, I commission. Usually, it's a fellow named Jacob Newcomb uh, to translate. So, you know, a lot of this, everything I, I do, it's like I'm relying on other people for so many mm-hmm. of the steps. Uh, high res Pokemon to you know the book exists and to scan it, and Jacob to translate it. And uh, working with Digital Gaming, someone else to edit the video, someone else voices it. Um, so, you know, I'm the writer primarily. Um, and I just kind of throw a lot of time at things like finding, you know, interviews in old Japanese magazines and so forth. But sorry, um, I'm getting off the topic. Uh, but, 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 but what was I talking about? High res Pokemon. Um, just, I'm, I'm well, curious. Just the, yeah. The amount of, like, like how, I'm curious how many articles are out there. Like surely there's a, a oh. going to be an end to the amount of Masuda articles. Yeah, I mean there's a finite number certainly, but um, you know I've got quite a few, and I know there's a lot that I don't have, um, and a lot of it is I don't know what I don't know. So now I know there's a lot that I don't have, and I know that there's a lot that I don't even know about. Um, mm-hmm. So there's still a lot more out there, especially That's for good. like for the earlier jams. Like you know mm-hmm. I've got probably something like a thousand pages right now I would like to have translated. Sometimes they come up as duds. Like there was a book that was 180 pages that I had the first hundred pages translated for considerable expense and time. Um, and um, there was a maybe like 10 tidbits that were even halfway interesting in those hundred pages. Right. Yeah, so I didn't yeah. have the last 80 pages. And then later I found out that there was, that there was 10 pages near the end that I, wanted to use for that Sugimori life story video. So I had to go back and get more paper point being though. Um, yeah, I've got over a thousand pages. I would like to have translated from books and magazines. And, um, there's probably, uh, more than another thousand pages. I'm not aware of or don't have in this time. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of Pokemon history still out there. And that's what I was mm-hmm. saying at the, at the beginning. That's part of what makes it such a good franchise to work with is that there is that deep well of untapped resources um that there aren't for especially like i did a video, another example i did a video on hollow knight i love hollow knight but yeah. that's a great new game made by an english-speaking small english-speaking company and so it's like everything they've ever said is on the hollow knight wiki yeah um, yeah that's not the case for something like pokemon like well, spanning this Not many years, too. even on the Japanese wiki, um, there's a lot of stuff you've actually got to get the book, and a lot of those books sometimes cost hundreds of dollars and so forth, which is it's kind of good for me because it's like, even if it's like hard to get the book and it's expensive, it's like, well, at least I know there's stuff out there that it still needs to be got. Yeah, it's not just like, well, yeah. the stuff is on the wiki anyway. What am I even doing here? Yeah, the case for some topics in some series. Isn't there like some misinformation too? Because I was super surprised yeah. to hear about um, the whole like the common idea that Gen Two was like meant to be the last games. I don't know if you wrote that one for Did You Know Gaming or not, but um, there what they said something. Now I it has been so long since I read. Yeah, since what, I watched what I the video. remember. So what you're referring to what the and this is the narrative that, that I'll repeat, and this is probably the popular narrative. So I guess we're wondering if if you have any insight if it's true or not. Um, but what I've heard is always that uh, Game Freak didn't intend Pokemon to be as big as it was, and then they said, let's make the biggest game we can make as a sequel, Gold, Silver, Crystal. Uh, and then the, I think like I think in their minds, they wanted to, they're like, if it dies, if it, if it ends now, let's make the best game we can make. They made Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and it still performed well. So then they were like, all right, I guess we're making, I guess we're doing this forever now, right? So that yeah, so that that's the story, and and, and so you're you're wondering if that's like a real thing, if that's no, I know it's a real thing. I was saying that there is like that 
there's misinformation basically out there because people think that they they were just going to end Pokemon and apparently they they had never had any plans to end Pokemon. Um, okay. With whatever information that you guys found at Digital Gaming, I don't know if you wrote it or not. That's why I was asking. But okay. Um, I lost you for a second there, but I think I got it. And I think you're I think you're right. Um, yeah, I did do. I I'd, I'd heard that years ago, like Gen two was going to be the last hurrah, and then so I sort of had my eye looking for any sort of source for that mm -hmm. um for years and finally it was just like i don't think there is a source i've been looking for years so i just i included that in a recent digital you know, gaming video so it was you know it, like again it was those sort of websites that have to you know each author has to write 10 articles a day um one of them wrote a story that was like yeah gen 2 is gonna be the last hurrah and it was based on pokemon company president suni kazu ishihara saying oh yeah gen 2 was going to be my last uh, the last game I worked on, um, mm -hmm. but uh, it wasn't because yeah. uh, I didn't think it was going to sell that well. I thought the fad was over, but so basically it was just him saying I was going to be done with it. But then um, I decided to stick around because uh, stuff kept on selling. Um, <laughs> so yeah. it was like one of those websites, you know, uh, you know, uh, okay, forget which one. Yeah, uh, ran, just basically misinterpreted that quote and ran with it, and then the other websites, as they always do, ran, ran the same story, and then yeah. you know it got posted as like a today I learned on Reddit and got thousands of upvotes, and then it works its way into some YouTube videos, and then it's just sort of becomes like a common knowledge kind of thing. Yeah. But it, oh yeah, I can't tell I can't tell you how many people like would absolutely say like it's fact that Pokemon was supposed to end after Gen 2 like the Gold and Silver games and I had believed that. that I had thought yeah. that was the case just because so many people had said it that like I just kind of assumed like it's a thing right mm -hmm. I only re like relatively recently like a month ago learned that that was not true yeah, with the video. <laughs> I didn't know until yeah. they, they yeah. posted the video. <laughs> but I, the only reason I brought it up is because you were talking about all of the, um, you know, the interviews that are out there that you don't know of or that you do know of and haven't gotten to yet. There's also like be, with 26, 28 years of history, however many we're at right now of the Pokemon franchise, you know, I'm sure that there is somebody misinterpreted some things as well that, you know, in the end, that's end up, you end up covering and maybe fixing but you know what i mean course correction kind of thing just connecting it back um yeah so the, the only thing that those articles who popularized that story cited was that ishihara quote from that iwata asks where he was saying i was going to be done with it uh not mm -hmm. that the series would be done and so right. they only cited that and so it's one of those things where it's like it's possible somewhere out there someone's mind or maybe even spoken in an interview somebody actually said something like that but like the people who popularize the story and spread the story the only source they're citing does not say that and so right. anything is possible but yeah. um you know you can't you, it's hard to prove a negative mm -hmm. um but I, I mean i all that said with all those caveats and, and sort of covering my behind uh yeah. with i get it those qualifiers is to say that this story is not true yeah mm -hmm. So it's interesting. I, I'm curious if there are any beta Pokemon that you know about that maybe you could give us like a little exclusive on that maybe you haven't revealed <laughs> anywhere else. Dusty wants the exclusives. Here told us the turkey and Jim yeah, Ford. The turkey, bro. <laughs> it was true. the turkey. <laughs> I mean, I I, I kind of do have something actually. I can't give it to you. I'm sorry. Let's hear it. Uh, oh, that's fair though. That's fair. He it's to... something I've been working on for yeah. uh, since April 2021, so almost three years. Wow! Um, and it uh, hopefully will be a video. It'll be as finished as it can be, and will be in a video this year. Awesome! Um, but uh, I, 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 I can't. Okay, I that's can't. no, no but that's that's just, good enough just for the me. Just knowledge is out there. Yeah. yeah. That's great. <laughs> now we're just excited about that. The exclusive mm -hmm. is that it's coming to you all yeah. very soon. From, right. from Did You Know Pokemon. Gaming and Dr. Lava. Uh, I love it. So Gen 5 is, on, I mean, presumably on the horizon. Everyone's buzzing about Generation 5. We had, we have no confirmation that there's going to be a new Generation 5 game, a Unova game. Well, you know what I heard, actually, is that they're not going to do Unova remakes. They're going to remake 
Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon next. That'd be <laughs> <exciting>. <laughs> uh, please, yes, thank yeah, you. That would be awesome. I want. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> oh man, that's your answer, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, of course. Um, yeah. So, Isaac, what what was the question about about Gen Five? So you have you have a video on YouTube uh, where you translated these documents, and you said some of it was not actually your discovery, but it, the video at least I've watched this video I feel like ten times uh, just throughout the years. Um, talk, and and the thumbnail says that there's eighteen lost Pokemon designs, right? Well, uh, yeah, it was just like Gen two and I guess Gen eight. Uh, Ken Sugimori had said that they had made you know. Um, Something like, if I remember for Gen 5 specifically, I think it was also about 300, or maybe he had said triple. Um, but there was a you know a very similar quote, just like Gen 2 and Gen 8. And so I had done a video on my own channel years ago that had said something. I think the, the, there was text in the thumbnail that said something like, 13 scrap Pokemon from Gen 5. Yeah. But that was, there yeah. were, you know, hundreds. Um, he, him, and uh, a couple other designers had described... There was like a baby uh, flame, uh, baby ghost flame oh, yes. um, that yeah. was sort of like the bottom, the the first stage of the chandelure. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Family, and then that there was um, so like a will o' wisp would evolve into a candle, and then a candle would evolve into a chandelier or a lantern. Oh yeah, there was another one, an evolve uh, middle stage of the. Um, this is the Southern Bell Pokemon? Lilligant. Yeah. Gen 5? Lilligant. Yeah, Lilligant. Lilligant Flower. I feel like when people talk about Gen 5, they, you know, talk about, like, like the thing I see the most is the Beta Crustle, like, being, you know, how it was supposed to originally be, like, uh, making its home in pottery or whatever. Yeah. But one thing that, I, and I cannot remember where you had got this from, but there's, like, an actual image from it, and it was you where i learned it from at least dr lava um it was that there was originally like a grass type goat planned for gym five and the thing that's interesting about that is yeah, that's in this obviously that didn't happen but then in gen six we did get go goat i think it bears more resemblance to go goat but it also has a lot of similarities to with the horn structure um, to uh the sawsbuck line which you had detailed in the video how sawsbuck went from that original root goat into the sea, you know a pokemon that represented the seasons which is really the mm -hmm. coolest thing about pokemon games they make pokemon specific for whatever the gimmick is or, or whatever features they're trying to highlight in a specific region which i think is really cool i think that's really cool because there's really that was a good one because it was actually concept art um of it i mean it's more like a sketch with a lot of yeah. text mm -hmm shown at like an event in japan in like 2010 something like that along with some other like concept art and so forth and just like a flash screen at this japanese event which was recorded off camera you know some person was recording with their phone or whatever the screen at the event and it showed you know quickly that picture of the root goat which had its name the art and like a bunch of little scribbles and stuff um mm -hmm. so that was the few gen 5 designs where we've actually got a visual of some sort um, right and that was that was official right like that was officially revealed by game freak at this like expo or whatever and that's just crazy to me because i mean do we have anything else like this not really for gen 5 i don't think so i think this is the only one we've got everything else was just the descriptions from mm. sugi mori boys in those magazines um, i think I mean, this is the only one for gen 5 we have an actual visual on if i'm yeah. unless i'm forgetting something and right. This is this is by High Res uh, Pokemon Art. This is on his website. So that was again High Res Pokemon was able to because it was like an off camera recording, and so he was able to like enhance that to the point where it looks like it's a scan, but it's yeah. like a video of a video screen from 2010 and like 240p, yeah, 240p on 240p. Like, so he was able to like upres that, so it yeah. actually looks not like shit. It is really cool. Yeah, he's he's the he's the goat. He, <laughs> he is the goat. He <laughs> is the root goat. <laughs> he is the root goat. I think that is um, what is so exciting about Pokemon. Like to think that whatever, you know, like they're working on so much behind the scenes, right? There are so many lost designs behind the scenes that exist. Whether we know them or not, they exist, right? There are potentially 
you know, 5,000 concepts for different Pokemon, right? That just it have existed, they were thought of by official members of the team and we'll never see them or we will see them. And that's the that's another exciting thing. It's like, will we see them? And mm. then Ah, oh, that's uh, I. I just like I can't help but smile. It gets me so excited. The fact that like all this stuff can like the you know especially with like the space world and like the gym four beta leak. The fact that those can happen like at any moment too yeah. is kind of crazy. Like r- right as we're talking, we could get a whole you know batch of Unova beta forms. You know, it, it, like any moment. That's just crazy to me. When that happened, well, when the space world, I'm demo, waiting. <laughs> yeah, when when that leak happened, I was not making content. And I, I don't think I thought too much of it when it first happened. Like I was almost like, oh, this, is, I guess, is just happening now. I didn't. I don't think I realized the implication and how right. like, that isn't a regular thing to happen. Um, I'm curious. Yeah, do you guys think something like that could happen on the horizon? Because we have, we do have beta information about Gen three and Gen four, and you know, you've helped discover some of these forms through the translations uh, of Gen five, but like. Like it's like give me the Gen Six love. Yeah, I guess it's just like it's it. The Space World demo is just like a a version of a game that was out there physically that was then like found and and the data was extracted. I'm curious if that stuff actually could exist for some of these other generations of games. Well, the there was yeah. Well, so, you know, it all originates from that hack of Nintendo. I think it actually happened in 2017, but the Space World demo was leaked in 2018. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with sort of the details or the history mm-hmm. of that hack leaks, uh, because it wasn't all leaked at once. But So that guy, uh, Wacko, was his screen name. Zamis Clark was his real name. Um, I'll, I'm okay to use his real name because it's all in the public, you know, the court records, because he did get caught prosecuted although he got off um Mm -hmm. basically for being too autistic to be imprisoned but um so he stole you know basically everything from the giga leak which included stuff about tons of nintendo games not just pokemon he hacked and then the first thing he dropped was um pokemon space world demo i'm sort of under the impression and i'm not in his mind but i was certainly left with the impression that he kind of got everything else. Uh, the Pokemon was the thing that he was most interested in. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, the first thing he dumped was Pokemon, and then he gave a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, he was like, he was already being prosecuted for hacking Microsoft at the time he hacked Nintendo. So he was already uh, kind of screwed. Um, but he gave a bunch of the stuff he hacked to various other people um, to hold on to. And then, so like later, some Gen 4. Uh, there's like a bunch of scrapped gender uh, so that, sprites so and then like, there were other forms and so it was like when covid happened a f- couple of years later i think the people who he he had given things to just got bored yeah and started dumping stuff online. i didn't know that was all connected I, oh yeah it is all connected and i, I yeah. think there it has still not all been dropped by the people that he gave that stuff out to. Um, I've spoken to one of them and they told me they dropped everything that they had. Um, I think there might still be some gen three stuff. Um, Cause you know, there was that, uh, what was the word for it? Uh, Festa uh, demo of gen three um, that uh, there's like some magazine scans that show that they're like early versions of Sharpedo and a few yeah, other Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. Not that different, but a little bit different. Um, was it ever not demo. cut in half? Huh? I was saying, <laughs> was Sharpedo ever not cut in half? That is like my biggest complaint with that line. <laughs> he was he was still cut in half, but he was a, he was a bit different, and there were some other Pokemon that were a bit different. But like with the Space World demo, like if you actually played it, you would only see a few Pokemon, but it was like in the mm-hmm. internal data yeah. uh, where that, you know, the big, you know, the 100 scrapped Johto Pokemon um, were actually located. And so the, like the magazine scans, they only show like what's actually in the game. Potentially if the Festa demo, and I would think that it would be if all that other stuff that leaked was, I would think probably the Festa demo or at least something else Gen 3 related would be in there um, because there was also that text only Gen 3 Pokedex, which was talking about right. white dragons right. and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, 
potentially there could be sort of like a space world all over again kind of situation for Gen 3, but with the FESTA demo instead of mm. not space world, that's FESTA. Again, mm -hmm. it's a demo. Potentially in the internal data, there would be a whole bunch of sprites. Um, wow. Oh, we, man, I want it to happen. Only, we've got the text only Pokedex, but we don't have the sprites. And so mm -hmm. wow, that's great. I think that probably still is in someone's private hands that the hacker gave them, and that person has still not. Bro, we got to get a hold it. of that. And, Possibly yeah. other states, you know, possibly Gen 5 or even, yeah. you know, anything 2017, really. I don't know. But I think Gen 3 is the one I'm most optimistic about. Well, I remember um, in Generation 5 dropped... during the um, during the release or during, like, I think it was a trailer, possibly. There were there were some Pokemon that had uh, different, there were, like, variations of different Pokemon, like like um, Excadrill. Um, and I, won I, I can't remember if it was an actual trailer that showed... Pokemon like Excadrill being purple, or if that was like a Coral Coral leak or something. Um, it was the first reveal trailer, like when they revealed it on Pokemon Sunday or one of those Japanese shows. I get them mixed mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Like, reveal trailer in Japan. Um, it, you, that's where that purple Excadrill with the reversed. Yeah, it has like a reverse pattern on its belly. So would that indicate that? Because I I feel like trailers, to make a trailer, you probably would just have a version of a game like capture the the visuals or whatever just cap capture the gameplay and then you edit it in post to make a trailer so would that would that suggest that it literally exists in a version of generation 5 so that could mean that there's different versions of gen 5 pokemon etc i guess that's that's what i'm assuming right now i think that's uh yeah i think it's a fair that's way cool. of putting it um, actually, so I meant to bring this up earlier in, I think it was maybe like two years ago, something like that. Uh, there was a sword and shield demo that kind of got, there was maybe a, just, a, I don't remember if it was screenshots or the whole thing was leaked or whatever, but there was a title screen. It, it basically showed a version of the sword and shield title screen that featured Pokemon that were cut from the national decks like Greninja, like Mega Rayquaza, and Me and the inclusion of Mega Rayquaza suggests that, that there could have been Mega Pokemon in that version of S Sword and Shield uh, at the time. Um, yeah, sure. Do you guys I know, wonder, know like, how much that? of that... I wonder how much of that was, like, placeholder and how much of that was, like... Sure. Actually, yeah. like, Mega was supposed to be in the game. Yeah, they could have just been yeah. using assets that like had existed, right? Or testing mm. things out before. And then they realize, oh, this is actually really difficult to do. We can't include all the we don't have enough resources or time. Let's uh let's just cut the decks. That that is really exciting to think that there's other like versions of games out there that could just literally pop off at any point. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's I mean, really the, cool. That gen the gen three one is like yeah. super exciting to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would that I mean, you're saying that there's probably someone that has it out there that's just too afraid to drop it, which I don't blame them at all. Yeah. But, yeah. It's well, insane. Well, so, Doctor... The Gen, yeah. the Gen 4 stuff... Sorry to cut in. No, no, good. Gen 4 stuff... Um, we need to talk about that. The person who had it um, didn't want to let it out because they, they had it, and they had it sort of on, like, a private website, essentially. I'm not quite sure how those websites work. but uh, So the hacker gave it to their buddies one the one of the buddies had the gen 4 stuff um it was really their best buddy because when the way that the the gold and silver demo the space world demo leaked was the hacker and this other person whose name i don't want to use they yeah, no. uh, were both in the pret discord where it dropped um they were already members and then they uh, made like a fake account to anonymously drop it in the Discord server that they were in with the other sort of Pokemon proto enthusiasts. Um, and then we're like, oh, wow, what have we what have we gotten here? Um, so like they kind of anonymously delivered it to their own group. And the hacker and their buddy were both in there. And so that buddy had the Gen 4 stuff and they were keeping it on like a private website. Um, and only showed a few of their friends and then one of their friends are the ones who sort of leaked it online and was like look there's all this stuff this one person has it and they're not showing it to anyone except his friends and so and then like 4chan basically bullied that person into sort of disappearing off the internet 
Um, mm. They say that they don't have any more Pokemon stuff. They do have other stuff, I believe, that they said. They don't, they don't have want to incriminate stuff. themselves. I'm not sure that they... Well, because they don't want to get keep getting harassed by 4chan. Um, sure. You yeah, can call it too. Discord tranny and all that and, and having their... Because they got doxxed. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, That's awful. I think it's That's probably awful. fair to say bullet as well. Yeah. So that person yeah. didn't want those Gen 4 sprites to even get out. Um, and it was only got out because of the interpersonal conflicts amongst those hackers' friends and the hackers' friends' friends. And so wow. um, the fact that the Gen 3 stuff hasn't got out yet uh, makes me a little bit less optimistic. Like, if it hasn't happened yet, maybe it's not going to happen. But I do yeah. think that probably it is in someone's private hands. And, you know, it just could be a matter of... Of, of one of their friends stabbing in the back again, like what happened with the Gen 4 stuff, or that person just getting bored. Yeah. Um, or old. Just, you know, because of that <laughs> one. What happens people. when they're just old, you know? They're just like, you know what? I'm I'm releasing it because I'm old now and I don't really care. Or like, <laughs> you, know? you know, they pass it down through their family. The kid gets it. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I mean, the magic of happened. all of this is that it, like, it literally could yeah. be lost to history. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. I mean, that, like a lot of that Gig League stuff, I think happened because you know it wasn't all just Pokemon. It was all kinds mm -hmm. of Nintendo stuff. It was I think it was just people getting bored at COVID. They were just locked in their houses and they were just got bored and like I'm just gonna see what happens if I dump all this stuff on 4chan. So you know, potentially you know someone's marriage goes south or or uh, they're in sort of some yeah. sort of manic state and they decide you know what I'm just gonna dump this stuff for the hell of it. Jeez. I don't mean to sound so cynical. Yeah. It could just I don't, be I don't know. I don't wish any harm to these people, but you know, if you want to release it, I'll, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not advising you to drop it, but <laughs> maybe that yeah, sounds so. cynical. My part, it comes down to the whims and the mood. No, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. one person or a few people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I. Uh, I do want to ask about this real quick, uh, you know, and I don't know if this was your discovery or not, but the uh, 1997 demo world map that was included in the demo of the game, like, it's a completely different layout from the Johto that and, and Kanto that we know. Could you just, uh, here, I'll pull it up on screen. Could you just kind of, like, run us through this right now? Because what I'm curious about, we've been doing a lot of, oops, uh, we've been having a lot of conversations uh, on, on Hidden Power about, like, you know, thinking about like if we go back to the ja to if we go back to a, re a Pokemon region that's based on Japan, like where, what area of like w would be the inspiration for for our new Pokemon region? So I'm kind of curious. And they literally uh, in this Japan is called the Kansai region, uh, which is a place in Japan. So it's kind of and Kanto is a place in Japan. So it's interesting to think that this like older version or understanding of the Pokemon universe was literally just Japan. Um, and I'm curious if there is maybe anything else that you've ever heard of that could suggest where a future game could be based on, right? Or anything that's been maybe confirmed by the developers or whatever. Um, um, well, real quick, the map was, you know, again, that happened before I... Yeah. You know, I was on a tour in China, like I said. Um, Obscure, who was the Team Space World member... Who ripped the sprites um, that had become so famous? He gave me that because it was too big. He said something like it, like the map itself was too big to put on some website where they put all the sprites. And so I said, well, I can put it on my website. And he said, All right, well, here you go. So that's the reason I have that on my site. Okay. Um, uh, as far as there were some quotes in some old Japanese magazines about that map, they'd said that it was basically it was unfinished and. Um, it was taking up too much space. Um, that was when Tajiri was in charge, was when that was the map that they hadn't finished yet. Um, and then he sort of gave over the director's chair to Masuda. Masuda was like, you know what? Like, let's do Johto instead of this all of Japan thing. And so they basically threw that in the trash and you know, made Johto instead. Yeah. Um, I have to look back on the quote. I put him in a video a few months back. Um, where they talked a little bit about that map. But as far as future regions, I, I, I don't know anything. I could speculate based on... Because um, so, so just you know, again, for, of... yeah, for context for listeners, right? So there are four Pokemon regions that are based on regions of Japan. 
Um, there might be some in the there might be some in the uh, in like spinoffs or whatever. Um, yeah, Ranger Games covers some more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and what I thought was interesting about this right here is that this this demo map is supposed to reference or be based on and touch upon all different sort of areas of the entirety of of Japan. So we actually have like a re, uh, or a town, right, that is representative of Hokkaido, right, which eventually turned into Sino, right? So I don't know, like like are there is there anything here? Are there any of do you know if there are any towns here that are like a specific um like region of Japan that has never once been referenced, right? I'm sure there is. Um, okay. I, I'm not aware of anything that would suggest okay. what a future region would be. I mean, I could only speculate, and my speculation wouldn't even be as good as maybe even yours, since I, I, won't, I won't take up your listeners' time. Sure, yeah, that's uh, fine. Yeah. On, <laughs> I, well, we've been talking about it a lot recently, so it's it's on our mind. But it's yeah, we, we thought this was really cool. Um, I mean, they haven't gone back to Japan since... Gen four, right? Unless exactly. I'm yeah. Something. Yeah. Yep, since well, um, I mean, technically, they went back to a portion of it with Kitakami and the sure. Teal Mask DLC. Yeah, that's true. Now. Kitakami oh. is it? Yeah, that's true. That's a really good um, point. Yeah, you know, I mean, because they did Gen five was America, then Gen six was France, Gen seven was Hawaii, America again. Yeah. Um, you know, Gen eight was the UK, and then we got Spain. So I mean, like, it seems. I mean, they've done basically the West, basically all the West since they left Japan. Um, you know, the thing that seems like they would make the most sense, and I keep coming back to it, maybe this is my own bias because I'm here, uh, but like, maybe not the next gen, but it seems inevitable that they're going to want to do a China region. Really? Uh, really? They're going to want to put more into China because, you know, like the whole, you know, like they had Tencent, which is basically Chinese. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point, whole. yeah. They had them make Pokemon Unite, which was a MOBA game. The game was basically tailored to Chinese tastes and made right. by Chinese Apple, basically, or Chinese uh, Facebook, maybe, is a better comparison. Um, yeah. Chinese Megacorp. It was made for Ch Japan by Japan. Uh, I'm sorry, made for China by J China, essentially. And they've been making, you know, over here, you go to Pizza Hut, they're, they've got some kind of toy deal worked out with uh, with Pokemon for Chinese Pizza Huts and mm -hmm. with Chinese C. You know, Pokemon's trying to push into, uh, uh, Pokemon's trying to push into China, basically, and have okay. been for a number of years. And it oh, yeah. seems like making a Pokemon region based on China would be... Um, a good way to get more money and so i would expect them to do the only thing i would maybe stop them would be the sort of the politics of it right um, but but it didn't stop them from from partnering with tencent uh, to yeah. make uh to make pokemon unite so i do feel like it's inevitable that there's going to be a china region um i'd say it's probably sooner rather than later I'm not really? saying it's going to be the next gen, yeah I do yeah. expect it. It's high on their list. Most of I'd be all for, for it, man. I'd be all for not it. Not only for, not only for financial reasons, but I mean, there's a lot of like rich great, history. I mean, he is great, but also like there's a lot of lore and fo a folklore and totally. mythology. You know, there's you know, gonna be a the... great wall, right? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe the great wall divides two regions, and we get to go back to uh, post game as another region, just like gold, silver, crystal. Well, it's like, you know, a lot of Japanese culture grew out of, uh, a lot of Japanese culture grew out of Chinese culture. And so it's sort of like how America grew out of, you know, the UK culture, yeah. I guess you mm -hmm. could say. But, but you know, like Definitely. there's just so many like mythical creatures and, and mm. uh, stories, so much they could draw, you know, because they've drawn on a lot of that Japanese stuff for Pokemon in the past. And there's like a whole, there's not a lot of like American folklore monsters, you know, I guess you got like Bigfoot and stuff, but they, you know, there's like well over a thousand Chinese folklore monsters that they could just they could pull from. Um, so not only for financial reasons, but I think for creative reasons, like yeah. it's just a wealth of material and a huge. You know, the biggest gaming market in the world right here is virtually untapped by them for Pokemon yeah. Unite and their KFC toys. So, um, but there, there, there have been, been a lot of Pokemon that have taken so, inspiration from Chinese lore and culture oh, yeah, before mm -hmm. 
hundred percent. That's really exciting to hear you say that because I think uh, what you what you you know what you mentioned. Um, there's been a lot of pushback. I think I think China, like a China-based region, in the Pokemon universe, has kind of been a non-starter conversation because of all the politics. I think a lot of people mm-hmm. are just like it'll never happen. But you are right. Most other corporations will sacrifice their own ethics and belief system to uh, kind of um, you know appeal to the Chinese market, right? I don't know. Well, and even aside from that, in a way, it's kind of it's kind of like a path to peace, right? Yeah. Or it can be, you know, if dumb right. Obviously, it can it can be a two side coin, but and I, I do love Pokemon. hearing. I don't know about Pokemon being the the <laughs> no, path to peace yeah. for them. I'm not, I'm not saying like Pokemon's gonna prevent us from World War Three. I'm <laughs> no, just saying like that's not what I'm talking you about. Know. But, but yeah, no, I mean that'd be a beautiful, beautiful story. Yeah, it's something that I don't think I've thought about, and now hearing you talk Taylor about Swift it, Taylor Swift kept us from the recession. Why can't Pokemon bring world peace? <laughs> yeah. I think it would be re- – th- I don't know. Maybe we do a whole episode on that. That would be kind of interesting to think about. Cause... I mean, I, I agree with the doc here. Like, I think eventually it could be a possibility because they are – like, they have Pokemon Quest there that is not here. And, right. And, it's like yeah. exclusive stuff. You're right. Mm-hmm. They, they've they been pushing the TCG. Like, there's a whole specific Chinese TCG that is happening right now, which is just, like, remaking the older cards but in, in uh, Chinese. So – I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff to go along with that. But I think eventually it's all about the money, you know, and if they have a big market there for it, they're like trying to get trying to get some of that. So who knows? It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're probably fairly aware of like, yeah, what other companies have done to try to get into China with like, you know, adding China. What was that? The The Martian. I don't know if you saw that. Maybe it's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, uh, with, Matt. with Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. It was. Like, there's like a scene. Uh, I won't go to the details, but basically, only so many foreign, only so much foreign media is let in each year, and so like these companies want to like try to get on the list. Yeah. So like in that, maybe they have like the Chinese government is like. Oh, like only the Chinese government, because the American government's like, oh no, we can't get Matt Damon off the off Mars. Like, oh, but maybe the Chinese government could help us. And then, like, the Chinese government is like, well, we do have like this secret rocket that could save him, but if we use it, then the Americans will know our secrets. But you know what? We're a really nice government, and we're we have the best technology. <laughs> so even if it does compromise our national security, we'll do anything to save Matt Damon. So yeah. we'll use our super secret rocket <laughs> with you. <laughs> I was like, ah. anyway, this is a silly example, but you right. know, there's a lot of companies who will yeah. bend over backwards mm-hmm. and access to the biggest video game market in the world and biggest movie market, I think, now. Maybe it's the second biggest. But and the fact that they did Pokemon Unite with Tencent, especially, really yeah, signals. Yeah, that is true. That was a big deal when that came out. A lot of people didn't like that, but it, they've been going hard, and there is a big community now of people who love Pokemon Unite. It has um, its own VGC circuit. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, like at Worlds, there will be a, a VGC, TCG, Go, and Unite sector. I love that. That's good. Yeah, that's for, that's for the uh, the competitive people. That's for the... Uh, yeah, that's really I got to sneak it in at each episode. You know me. So let's, uh, mm-hmm. Doctor, we want to ask you some questions uh, to help our audience get to know you a little bit better. Uh, let's start out with this. What are your two favorite uh, types? Or, or like, you know, if you were a Pokemon, if you were a trainer. What, what type... would your type be and yeah. what would your hidden power type be? My like two that. favorite types was the first question. Like dark and Steel because cool. they're the coolest, obviously. Yeah. Edgy. Uh, what would my type be? And then your hidden so power type. Two of you. Yeah. I don't think I'm cool enough. What would your type be? Like how people would see you? Like what would people who know you say your type would be? And then your hidden power type is what you truly are. Okay, I guess like my type would be normal because I'm kind of a normal <laughs> boring. I'm a pretty normal boring guy. But my hidden power type would probably be steel. In some ways, I'm like a Gen 2 because like I was most active playing. Like when I went to the Pokemon World Championships was when the was it called? Neo Genesis okay. uh, came out. And so it was like Sneasel was the best card yeah. in the game. Those are my favorite and, cards. Uh, like, you know, before they had like all the 
15 Pokemon types were all like condensed down into just, I think it was seven types. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like, for example, like fighting covers, like rock and ground and, and fighting. Yeah. Um, but like dark and steel both got like their own unique types. And there's only a few Pokemon for them. So they felt like really hot and they were powerful and, and cool um, and special. And so um, they just seemed like the cool, like when they had a dark and steel, it just seemed like the coolest shit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's still kind of definitely for types. For sure. It's definitely for sure. cool back then. And I mean, I'm definitely a Gen 2 person as well. I don't know if Dusty kind of is, yeah, but I am. I totally get it. Like when, when the two other types came out, new t- types came out, I was like freaking out about just Dark and Steel being added into Pokemon as we knew it. Have you heard so. anything that might suggest the introduction of a new type down the line? Because it's been like a decade since Fairy. And at this point, I think a lot of fans are like, we'll never get a new type. But that's where people were at right before we got Fairy type. Well, Ken Sugimori said something after Fairy type. Let me pull it up. I don't know okay. what the folder's called. Um, I can issue the direct quote when this gets done loading. Here we go. In 2016, uh, Ken Sugimori said, by adding even one more type, it definitely makes the gameplay more complicated. So when we did that, we had to really look into the, ba- the battle balance. With, mo- with new moves, there's an infinite combination. If we can solve that problem, we can always add more types. It's not impossible. Mm, yeah. So, and so, you're more in 2016, said it's kind of a, I'm trying to swear, it's kind of a, a pain in the butt to, um, to do with the balancing and all that. But if they mm-hmm. can solve that problem, then, you know, they're open to yeah. doing it. So. All right, so speed round questions. What are your uh, wh- wh- what's your dream team of Pokemon? Top six favorite Pokemon on Doctor Lava's team. Well, I, I, again, my my mind goes with the card game. Yeah, so, that's fine. That's great. That's fair. Good card game. So, uh, two thousand three. So I guess it's gonna have to be Sneasel, Scyther, Gligar, <laughs> Pichu, Cleffa. Pichu and Cleffa. Yeah. That's well, these cool. are the cards I used. Yeah, yeah. I'm Got one more left. And uh, and for alligator. Okay. Yes. Ha- Good man. Yeah, th- those are that's a great team right there. Uh, very oh, anime yeah. team with the unevolved Pokemon. I do gotta ask you though. Again, is there any? Have you heard of anything that might introduce? Uh, might suggest that we could get uh, more baby Pokemon in the future? The last time we got a baby Pokemon surprisingly was in Gen Eight with Toxel, um, but that was like a one-off Pokemon. The time before that was like Generation Four. Um, just curious. You know, what, now that you ask, I don't think I've even seen a question or an answer in any Pokemon interview since, like, since Gen Two, yeah. where babies even came. No one seems to give a a, yeah. a crud about. Babies. I've been talking about them more and more. Nobody does. It's they're, so they're, true. They're, I mean, I don't know. I think they add a lot of. I think baby Pokemon are valuable when you give them to Pokemon that, I like theoretically, don't make sense to be coming out of an egg. Like a Lapras or a Snorlax, right? Snorlax got a baby form. That's great. Kangaskhan See, me, should have a baby form of just. The baby. I only care. I only care when it like builds lore, like the fact yeah. that they connected Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee yeah. by giving them Tyrogue. Love that. So like, if they did like a people always propose like a Tauros and Miltank baby, I'd be fine with that. But I, not. You, you know, do I don't. Whole we don't need to just randomly Pokemon. give Lapras a baby <laughs> or randomly give Krabby a baby. No, I don't need that. We should we should do a deep dive into baby Pokemon. Baby Pokemon. That's a that's a killer idea. I agree. <laughs> yeah. it's a I million know. dollar idea. Yes, yeah, so, baby I mean, crabs. I love the idea of sock and throw being connected uh, by some sort of uh, some sort of baby form. But uh, yeah, I have learned through some of your stuff that like originally I think sock was going to be a, or maybe throw was going to be a standalone Pokemon and then they created a rival for it. Um, so I, I don't know if that's actually going to happen at this rate. Um, so yeah, top six, that's a good answer. All right. Um, we asked you what your favorite beta Pokemon was. That was the, uh, the, 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 the voodoo doll. Mm-hmm. A line. Yeah. And your favorite Pokemon game. What is that? I'm going to assume it's silver version or something. Lee Heart Gold, Soul Silver, one yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. Do you Solid love... answer. Yeah. I, I I hope we I hope we see a return to Johto in the near future. That'd be a lot of fun. 
Yeah, well, I liked Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I mean, they weren't groundbreaking, but I had a lot of fun yeah. uh, with uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I was hoping that they would do Let's Go uh, Johto. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Masuda yeah. seemed to suggest that maybe they would uh, years ago, but now it's been so long. I'm, yeah. It's gonna happen. I, yeah. We will see. A lot of we people are see. assuming we're going to get either a brand new game. Anyways, that's a whole conversation in the Johto region, or uh, I think the possibility is I think Heart Gold Soul Silver is kind of perfect. Either port it or maybe just just remaster it. Uh, kind Give of, me kind Legend of like a Celebi. Hmm. Give me Legend Celebi. Yeah, be that nice. would be very cool. That would be oh, that would that would, that would be the ideal because I like mm-hmm. Johto and Legends Arceus was the best Pokemon game. Yeah, you know, and they bring back Arceus. all of the beta Pokemon. They just Bring all the yes. proto. They all proto lived in, in the in the prehistoric Johto. These beta Pokemon yeah. lived. <laughs> or what, I dream. what if they don't want to go to the trouble of like balancing all that? So what if just like somewhere in Johto, some random place, like say I don't know, maybe under the professor's house, mm, there's like a basement, yeah. the cellar. You open the cellar, and there's just like a bunch of like skeletons of all the beta Pokemon. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> They die. And they're all no. ghost type. As long as we get that giant uh, skeleton dragon dinosaur looking thing that comes out of there too, then I'm good. Yeah. Is there <laughs> is there any um have you have you read any like really compelling articles about the development of Legends Arceus that kind of stand out to you that you can just think of right now? Weirdly, um, there was a C deck, which is like uh, I forget what it stands for. Some developers conference in Japan, C D E C. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a C deck mm-hmm. thing where they touched on the sound uh, for the game, which was kind of yeah. interesting. But other than that, I like they were really unless there's been something recently. Like they don't do interviews about that game. I think mm-hmm. maybe they thought people were gonna hate it. I think so. Uh, before that's what out. I said. That's what I meant when I said I feel like. I feel like the Pokemon company snubbed Legends Arceus. I yeah. feel like they were unfair to that game. I think they saw what happened to Let's Go. Everyone like talked bad about it, even though it ended up being like a pretty fun game, or at least pretty or what. I, like I think it was for Let's Go though, but they did there basic, weren't? basically one for Legends. It was strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, 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 they were kind of like, let's give them the really cool game that we're proud of, but but BDSP will sell better. We just know it will. So let's just make that the the primary, uh, the primary thing. I guess it could have also maybe there's not a lot of interviews because of uh, maybe because of COVID possibly. Um, that was around that time period. It was around that time. Um, okay, so what I'm what what I'm dying to know. What, what are you up to now? What uh what what does the future for Doctor Lava look like? What, what do you have uh, going on? You, you already you already said you got some videos in in the works when it comes to beta or at least lost Pokemon. So I'm excited about that. Well, I've got a video coming up. I already wrote it, and um, I think it's gonna I think it's already been voiced. So it's gonna be pretty soon. There's a video about Pikachu meets the press, the American comic uh, strip, the American Pokemon comic. I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with that. Mm-hmm. In one of those old Japanese books, there's a bit how they're talking about how when Charles Schultz, the author of Peanuts, was on his deathbed, all the Pokemon executives got together and were like, let's replace Peanuts with Pokemon. And we got to act quick because Charles Schultz could mm-hmm. die any minute. And so they like threw together this quick comic and it was terrible. Um, and then like <laughs> the main author. <laughs> I think I should That's say fun. that. Um, That'll be fun. Um, That'll so be I got fun. a video. Um, there's another one. There's one I said I was working on three years. I don't want to say too much. Yeah. Um, and then there's another one. Um, I guess I, I don't want to say the name of the game, but you know, I was talking about I got that Pokemon 2000 adventure kind of back online from being lost media. Um, there's another sort of, sort of obscure but um, official Pokemon game that a friend of mine manage to get his hands on and is tr- currently trying to make it playable but it's got a lot of sprites um that were not in any mainline games but Ooh. uh they're kind of gen 3 style i'll say um mm. so uh, that'll be cool so kind awesome. of bringing yeah. that game back to life doing a video about it and you know sprites and hopefully the game will be able to be made playable um because presently there's not even footage footage of it online, despite it was an official game. 
So mm. um, that's kind of the main. Those three things are the kind of the main stuff. And I'm also writing some Metal Gear videos that will be voiced by David Hayter. So awesome. That'll be fun. Uh, but are there any? Uh, all, I have a lot. Are there any <laughs> Doom videos in your future? <laughs> No, not really. I interviewed a few people, but I couldn't really get any new information that was worth using, so I kind of gave up on it. So for me, Doom is just a hobby. You ever find that when you try to make your hobbies into your job, then they become a lot less fun as yeah, a hobby? Yeah, you ever absolutely. had that experience? Sure. But I, ha I had a Star Wars podcast. It didn't last. I started a TCG channel. Didn't last. I started a Shiny Hunting channel. Didn't, didn't last. It happened. Yeah, when you turn your hobbies into your into your job they they make the hobbies less fun absolutely you, you got to keep some stuff sacred to yourself for sure for sure i'll have to be i think pokemon's the only thing where i'm like it's still fun even though i make content it's still fun yeah pokemon's because you really 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 love it kind it's of because i'm obsessed yeah <laughs> but uh yeah dr lava thank you so much for being here with us um you want to let the people know where they can find you uh, just, you know, on the internet, you know, sign on, <laughs> all, all your links will be in the sure. description. Uh, yeah, drlava.com. It's been like an honor to have you on. It's been great to like meet you and talk to you about these things for sure. Because yeah. I don't know, I've, I've been following your stuff since it started happening. And I was, I didn't have any social media presence at that point. And like, this is like, proto Pokemon is my passion, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Where I'm just like, I love this stuff. So, you know. I'm all about it, and it's great to have okay, you on. I really appreciate you having me on. I'm, I, I first became aware of y'all's show like eight months ago or something when you had high res Pokemon mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I recognize you guys from, from Twitter, but uh, you know, I, didn't, I hadn't seen y'all's faces until you had on HRP. So, oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was fun to be on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, for sure. First, we want to thank our mythical tier supporters. We have SEH, Art Gold, Jasko, Candice Wendy's, and Trash Panda. And then we want to give a super special thanks to our Arceus tier supporters, Drogain and Bramtastic. Thank you thank guys you so all. much. Thank so you much. so much. You guys are keeping this show alive, especially this time of year. Uh, ad rates on YouTube videos, uh, they drop. Uh, there's a lot of less interest in Pokemon overall. Uh, so you guys supporting us week in and week out uh, keeps the show active, keeps the show alive, uh, and moves us all as a community into the future. We'll see everyone soon. Peace out. Bye. <laughs> see you guys. See you guys. All right, cool. Oh, he actually just logged off. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right, well, I got I to gotta run like Come right back. now. Come so. back. Right. See y'all. <laughs>